So for the first method, let's create a point and a circle indeed. And we're going to constrain these to be at the intersection of those two constructions. So let's choose the icon constraint point at and follow the prompts at the bottom of the screen. Identify the first construction, the second construction and then identify the point and accept and immediately the point gets constrained to the intersection of the two constructions and we can see our new blue graphic here which is the constraint it's just a plain circle again a circle is normally filled if you have fill turned on which makes the point um, is behind it and can't be seen so that's why I normally work with fill turned off when working in dimension driven design and then let's do it with a circle as well let's constrain point at the intersection uh, the circle at the intersection of the two constructions like so now just here there's a, a note that makes it a little bit unusual just the thing to be aware of is when when you choose the circle to be constrained at the intersection of the two points you should hover the mouse in the center of the circle to select it rather than around the outside otherwise it won't work let's do that again and do it wrong nothing happened okay just a little thing to be aware of that doesn't actually happen when you constrain a point on with the center of a circle on a line you can select anywhere on the circle and it will work but with this constraint it's just something to watch out for. Okay, so let's look at the second method. Let's get two lines again. And we'll give them direction constraints again. And this time I'm going to create a point at the intersection. So the process is very same. We identify the two constructions. And now instead of identifying a point, we just accept and then reset and the point gets created. It's good to know both of those options because both do get used. So what's next? Next point is constrained points coincident. Again, this will work at points but it will also work with the center points of circles which is probably the more useful one. We do it with a, a circle and a point first. Very similar process. Identify the two graphics and accept and the point gets constrained to the center of the circle. The more usual one that this one will be used for will be to make two circles coincident. So select the two circles and accept. And of course we could do it with two points as well but I don't really know how that will be used or how useful it will be. I don't. I wouldn't even recommend using that at all. In fact, if I skip over the next option here, which is fixed point, <coughs> and go to the equate constructions, that will be a much more suitable method. and making two points coincident. That will make two points equal. So let's make let's add two points and equate them. And if I select this and you look down the lower corner here, I only have one element. So it hasn't duplicated the elements, it's made only a single element. However, if I had to done that with two points to be coincident like this. Now I have three elements. I have my graphical constraint, which is one, and I have my two points. So that's why I wouldn't recommend using that. Whereas equate is much more efficient. It, you only have one graphical element in the design file. Equate constructions will also work for lines. I 
that has given me one element there. Now, the last point on equate constructions is don't use it. Exclamation mark. And just to give extra accentuation there, I've drawn it in a thickness of five. Don't use it. Um, well, you can use it. Of course, there's no reason not to really. But I've found with some more, much more complex solutions, it's actually broken things on me occasionally. It seems to be a little bit buggy. Um, if your dimension-driven design solution is well designed from the start and is efficiently drawn, there should never be a need to use equate constructions as far as I've come across so far. And the fact that it's a bit buggy as well, I'd say don't use it or avoid using it. That's what I do personally anyway. Now before I go on to the last two, fixed point and const constraint constant, I need to go off on a tangent here and talk about degrees of freedom, which I'll do in the next video.